Hey guys, it's Aneke the Zina Girl, and today I'm gonna talk to you guys about five mistakes that I made right after graduating Bunga. So let's get right into it. Okay, so mistake number one is basically starting job hunting late slash inconsistently. Now, like I said, there was a big fat circumstantial component to this mistake, and that's the fact that there was the global panorama happening. And so basically, I was supposed to be starting school in April of 2020, but that got pushed all the way to June. And so during those months, I was not doing any job hunting. June came around and I was back to school. And at that point, all I was focused on was finishing my graduation collection. I think I tried to apply to like one job in May, but then it didn't work out and I got really discouraged. And I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna focus my time on my graduation show and my graduation collection. Nothing wrong with that, of course, please. By all means, I highly recommend that you focus on your graduation show and your graduation collection. But I also recommend that you put in the time and effort that's needed towards finding a job for yourself after you graduate. But bear with me, I'm gonna get into why later on and I'm gonna explain to you why this number one mistake kind of snowballed into the rest. But essentially, like I said, I ended up focusing on my graduation collection pretty much from June all the way until January when I had my graduation show. And it was only in January that I started looking for jobs for myself. And my graduation was rolling around soon. I was graduating literally in March of that exact same year. So I only had three months to look for jobs. And sure enough, that was not enough time. And that basically snowballed up to mistake number so mistake number two was trying to apply for jobs that were completely unrelated to my major. Now, I did not know this, but if you are a Semmongakko graduate, aka if you went to vocational school, you essentially cannot get a job that is unrelated to your major. Now, if you study in university, that doesn't matter. You can literally graduate and do whatever the heck job you want. But I did not know this and I chose Semmongakko. I chose to go to Bunkas Semmongakko, their vocational school. And so... When I graduated, I tried to apply for a job that essentially was outside of my field because I thought, you know what, maybe all I need is a job that pays me really well and that makes me really happy and even if it's not related to fashion, it doesn't matter, I'll be fine. But unfortunately, that was not the case for me. I wasn't able to accept a job offer that was given to me because I did not have a bachelor's degree and it's not because my job or that job required the bachelor's degree it was because the visa required the bachelor's degree definitely opt for Bunka's university instead of opting for Bunka's college um, because you're gonna need an undergraduate degree to be able to do a job that's unrelated to your major and that leads me to mistake number three which is trying to apply to Bunka's university way too late once I was told that I'm not going to be able to accept the job offer that was given to me because I didn't have a bachelor's degree, I thought to myself, okay, great, fantastic. I guess that just means that I need to get a bachelor's degree, right? Wrong. I ended up going to Bunka. I said, hey, I technically graduated Bunka already. I have three years under my belt. Is there no way that you can give me a bachelor's degree if I, let's say, transferred my credits over to the university? They said, yeah, actually, it is possible. If you do an additional two years, we can give you a bachelor's degree. And I said, great, sign me up. And they said, oh, not so fast. Come back in one month. Now, mind you, this is already in March, so I already graduated, right? And so I came back a month later in April, and I said, hey, so where can I sign up to go to this university course? And they said, oh, you can sign here. Basically, pick the courses you want, and we'll get back to you. And so I signed up for the classes I wanted to, except I did not realize that I was essentially applying for next year in April, which means that there was gonna be a gap of time where I was either gonna have to go back to my country or figure out what to do visa-wise because or else I wasn't gonna be able to stay in Japan until April of next year. Now, if I had thought about going to Bunko's university the year before and applied the year before, I could have seamlessly just studied university right after I graduated college, but unfortunately, I didn't. I waited until it was way too late and by the time I was applying for Bunka, I was gonna have to wait a one year gap and honestly that just was not realistic for me. I ended up regretting that decision very much and then I started panicking because I realized that I only had a few more months left to my visa. It was literally April at that point. My visa was going to expire in July and I said, you know what? Fine. I'll go somewhere else to figure out a visa that can let me stay in the country. And that's what led me to mistake number four. Mistake number four was not applying for the job hunting visa on time. So I had heard about this job hunting visa. It's basically a visa that allows you to stay in the country for an extra year after you've graduated from Bunka. And I thought, perfect. Since my visa is running out and it's coming to an end in July, what should I do? I need a temporary visa that'll let me stay and continue my job hunt. So I went over to the school and I said, hey guys, I heard about this job hunting visa. Where can I sign up? Where can I apply for it? And the lady looked at me and said, oh honey, the deadline for the job hunting visa is 
finished in March. Basically, you need something called a recommendation letter from the school, and the school does not give out these recommendation letters past March. So at this point, I'm standing in their office, it's April, and I am not eligible to get this recommendation letter, which means that I cannot get a job hunting visa, which would have let me stay in Japan for an extra year. So my tip to you guys is find out when the deadline is for the job hunting visa and apply for it a sap don't wait a second don't wait a minute literally just get the paperwork that's necessary for you to be able to apply for it and do it and get it out of the way because that'll literally give you an extra one year to just continue job hunting if you're not able to find a job so basically now i was stuck without a job stuck without a job hunting visa not able to go to university and I just had to figure out what I was going to do to be able to stay in Japan. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to keep job hunting for the next couple of months and hopefully I'll find something before July and I'll just, I'll just get a job, I'll just work like what everyone else does, right? So I started looking for a job and that's what led me to mistake number five. Mistake number five is looking for and accepting a job to last minute. So essentially I started looking for a job last minute. Mind you, I only had about three or four months left on my visa and I found one. Uh, I passed their interview process and they loved my portfolio and they decided to give me a job. But what I didn't realize is the fact that I was so pressed to find a job ASAP made me completely ignore a bunch of red flags that this job was giving me. Number one, I didn't sign a contract before I started working. They literally wanted me to start working ASAP without signing anything. Number two, when I started this job, we weren't really 100% clear what was gonna happen with my pay. They promised me a certain amount, but because I hadn't gotten my visa yet, they basically were just like, we'll figure out the pay later on. Number three was the fact that my visa which needed to be changed to a full-time working visa was a super complicated process that they had no knowledge about because they were a super small company that was willing to hire me super last minute. And so essentially um, I had to go out, look, find somebody who could help me teach my company how to hire a foreigner and process my visa. They essentially were supposed to work with her, but they did not cooperate with her and essentially they were not able to process my visa on time and so basically I was left with a job that was not paying me properly that did not process my visa that didn't give me an actual contract to sign and that basically was just taking advantage of me to do all kinds of jobs that were not related to what I was originally hired to do now when I think about this job I just laugh because it's crazy that I was so enthralled with the idea of getting a visa through this job that I actually was willing to keep plowing through it and I actually worked for them for about three months before I finally realized that like, oh girl, you have to quit. You have to quit. And honestly, when I look back on it, I can say that these are the five mistakes that I've made, but the number one thing I did, which I do not regret and I think was the best choice that I made, was to work with a consultant who basically helped me with my immigration uh, documents. I will leave a link in the description to her website. You can definitely go out and reach out to her on by email. Because my situation was so complicated, essentially they were the immigration bureau was willing to give me this visa so I could stay in the country and figure out what my next step is. But that's honestly because of what's going on right now because there is a global panorama happening and it would have been impossible for me to just pack up my bags with just literally I kid you not I had a few days left on my visa so because it got to that point where it was so dire um, luckily she was able to help me to stay in the country and now I have a visa that lasts until January of next year if you guys are curious to know like what's next for me what am I gonna do now that I have gone through all these five mistakes and I've you know managed to still stay in the country what are my plans what am I gonna do next well uh, I went through a very dark phase, a dark period of my journey here in Japan right after all of this stuff happened. But now things have really turned up. Um, I had a moment where I had to say goodbye to a long-term relationship that I was in. I said goodbye to two of my best friends who literally were here since day one. I've known them for six years and I had to say goodbye to both of them because they went back to their home countries. Um, but luckily there's other things for me that you know were super positive and amazing. Like I recently got a hamster which I love to bits and pieces. She's such a sweetheart. Her name is Brittany and she keeps me busy and um, yeah, I love taking care of her. And then I also have my little sister who, of course, as you guys know, is now living with me. And I have a bunch of amazing friends who are still in Japan who I love to hang out with. And I'm also working on a secret project which I want to tell you guys about, but I'm gonna wait because I want all the details to be solidified. Uh, and I'm also possibly going to be moving cities. I got a job opportunity that's out in Osaka. I was supposed to go this month, but it got pushed to next month. So next month, fingers crossed, if things all work out and COVID doesn't you know, come in and bombard stuff, then you guys will see me in a completely different city. So yeah, I'm very happy. Luckily, my life still took a very 
a positive turn and I'm excited to see what things hold for me and what the future holds for me. But um, yeah, I just wanted to come on here and let you guys know that there are ways to prevent yourself from getting in the situation that I did and so I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. And if it was, definitely be sure to leave me a comment down below. Make sure to like this video if you liked it and I will see you in the next one. Bye!